Welcome. In this episode, we're going to visit the town of Beckworth, California. And we'll also take a look into the life of its founder, legendary former slave James Beckworth. Beckworth is located about 37 miles northwest from Reno, Nevada. California State Highway 70 passes through Beckworth about 20 miles west of its intersection with U.S. Highway 395. Beckworth is served by a small airport on the east side of town. The original settlement of Beckworth dates back to the 1800s. The town includes a mix of some more modern buildings and also some very, very old buildings. At one end of the street, you can find a modern fire department and at the other end, an old water tower. One of the more iconic buildings in town is a two-story brick building that's over 100 years old. To this day, it still serves as the meeting place for the local Masonic Lodge. When you walk down Main Street and look to the southwest, you can see Beckworth Peak overlooking the town. Two miles west of Beckworth, there's a rest stop on California Highway 70. The rest stop includes some nice information plaques with some information about James Beckworth and some of the local Native American tribes. Local tribes include Mountain Maidu, Washu, and Northern Paiute. The rest area includes a replica of a stone-lined oven. The information plaques describe how archaeologists have found several of these stone-lined ovens in the area. Scientists believe that a thousand years ago, a major drought hit the world and local diets changed. The ovens were used to cook bulbs in response to the severe drought when food sources had to change. The plaque at the rest area describes James Pearson Beckworth as a mountain man and entrepreneur. In 1851, Beckworth discovered a new mountain pass across the Sierras and established a new emigrant trail into California. The trail was established into American Valley near present-day Quincy. In American Valley, the trail merged with an established trail into Marysville. The new pass was named for Beckworth and is located 15 miles east of Beckworth along Highway 70. Located about one half mile due west from the rest area is the location of Beckworth's original trading post. It was located in the extreme northwest corner of the Sierra Valley. In 1852, Beckworth built a log cabin at this location. 30 years ago, this log cabin was restored and today it serves as a museum dedicated to James Beckworth. Over the years, the log cabin has been marked with various plaques. In 1932, the AAA Auto Club marked the log cabin with a plaque. In 1964, the ECV organization marked the log cabin with a plaque. A more detailed plaque was added in the early 1990s when the log cabin was restored. Along with the trading post, Beckworth established a ranch in the area. And the large valley in the area was originally known as Beckworth's Valley before it became later known as Sierra Valley. Beckworth changed his name from Beckwith 
to Beckworth in about 1853. Consequently, some of the early references to the pass, the valley, and the town will mention Beckwith instead of Beckworth. One example is this 1856 news story describing an emigrant train arriving across the Beckwith Pass. When Beckworth opened up his trading post along the new immigrant trail in 1852, his home was the first home that pioneers came across since leaving Salt Lake City. Beckworth's trail quickly became a popular route. As this article shows, by 1854, over 10,000 pioneers followed the route. After crossing through the Nevada desert, Beckworth Valley must have appeared as a green oasis to the pioneers. In the 1850s, it must have been an amazing sight that Jim Beckworth reported to a local newspaper. Beckworth described a surround hunt by the Paiute Indians. Over a period of eight days, over 400 deer and antelope and some wolves were surrounded and killed in the Beckworth Valley. The approximate route of the original Beckworth Trail has been marked with a series of posts beginning on the east side of Beckworth Pass. Some of the posts are easy to find and others are more difficult and may be on poorly maintained and or private roads. Examples of these marker posts include this one located east of Beckworth Pass, a couple miles south of Highway 70. After crossing a railroad crossing for an out-of-service railroad track, this marker post can be seen on the other side of a barbed wire fence on private property. The inscription reads, Beckworth Trail, Long Valley. We descended into the head of a beautiful valley. Here we found things requisite for camping. Our road led immediately down the valley from camp with a good level road all the way. John C. Thornley, August 16, 1852. The next example trail marker is located on private property just to the southwest of Beckworth Pass. The inscription reads, Beckworth Trail, Beckworth Pass. Tro informed us we were in California when Father gave three loud cheers which echoed from the rocks and hills about us. Willie said that he would not like to spend his life in California if this was it. Harriet S. Ward, October 1st, 1853. The next example trail marker is very easy to find and visit. It's located directly next to the fire station in Beckworth. The inscription reads, Beckworth Trail, Headwaters of Feather River. The road now continues down the valley, 13 miles. Here is a spring of water near the road on the left. Also a small stream, the Headwaters of Feather River, past several mountains called Buttes. Henry T. Baldy, September 8, 1852. The fourth and final example marker is also easy to locate and visit. It's found in the parking lot of the rest area. The inscription reads, Beckworth Trail, the road forks. Beckwith's house is the first house that I have seen since I left Laramie. At Beckwith's house, the roads fork. The left hand goes to 76 in Marysville. The right hand is called Beckwith's route to Marysville. John F. Freeman, September 13th, 1852. Before Beckworth settled down and opened up a trading post and welcomed pioneers into California, he had a life full of unbelievable adventures on the frontier. Beckworth was known as a very skilled and entertaining storyteller. In 1856, Beckworth partnered with T.D. Bonner to write down and publish his autobiography. Bonner was a retired judge who had practiced in Quincy, the nearby county seat of Plumas County. The book did very well, sold a lot of copies, and Beckworth became relatively famous at the time. The book was translated into French, and a lot of copies were also sold in France. Beckworth was born in Fredericksburg, Virginia in 1798. His father was a slave owner named Jennings Beckwith. His mother was a slave working in the household of his father. He was the third of 13 children of his father. 
After the Louisiana Purchase in 1803, the family moved to the St. Louis area. James's father, Jennings, shows up in an 1811 St. Louis newspaper when it was reported that he had unclaimed mail waiting at the post office. As a child, James received four years of classroom education. As a teenager, he was apprenticed as a blacksmith. In preparation for him to become a journeyman blacksmith, his father formally emancipated him and made him a free man. However, after a five-year apprenticeship, James turned his back on the blacksmith trade and chose a life of adventure. When this ad appeared in the local papers in 1823, James Beckworth joined William Ashley and became a frontiersman and a trapper in the Rocky Mountains. The book is a pretty slow read. The language tends to be dated and repetitive. However, the perspective on the conflicts between Native American tribes and also the conflicts between whites and Native Americans is something that you won't see in most school textbooks. Beckworth lived with the Crow tribe and eventually became a chief within the Crow tribe. Based on Beckworth's account, fighting between various Native American tribes could be pretty brutal. Horses were a food source. Consequently, horses were a commodity that were often taken following successful battles. The culture involved scalping victims from other tribes after successful battles, and then celebrations with the scalp dance back at camp afterwards. In the book, Beckworth covers the trade between whites and the Native Americans in detail. During the time Beckworth worked for the fur company, he watched the fur trade change from something that was positive for the Native Americans to something that destroyed their culture. In the beginning, the fur company traded things of practical value like tools, weapons, and cookware in exchange for beaver pelts. Years later, the fur company figured out that they could get the Native Americans addicted to alcohol and they would trade kegs of whiskey in exchange for beaver pelts. In his book, Beckworth described how the whiskey was leading to the disintegration of the Native American culture. The book includes many chapters with nearly unbelievable accounts of adventures of Jim Beckworth. In 1837, when the American Fur Company did not renew his contract, Beckworth returned to St. Louis. He volunteered with the United States Army to fight in the Second Seminole War in Florida. Later, he founded a trading post in Pueblo, Colorado. In the 1840s, Beckworth ended up in California. He moved around a bit in California. He did a lot of different things. He was involved in the fight with Mexico. He worked as a guide and a courier for the military. He owned a store in Sonoma, and he worked as a professional card player before discovering Beckworth Pass, establishing the new emigrant trail, and founding his trading post in Beckworth. In 1859, Beckworth returned to Missouri briefly, but settled later that year in Denver in Colorado Territory. He died in a Crow village in 1867. In 2016, Leonardo DiCaprio won the Oscar for Best Actor for portraying Hugh Glass in the movie The Revenant. Like James Beckworth, Hugh Glass joined William Ashley's Fur Company in 1823. The true story about Hugh Glass covered how he was nearly mauled to death by a grizzly bear. A movie about James Beckworth is long overdue. It would be great to see a sequel to The Revenant covering the life and times of James Beckworth.